ahead and start again. Good morning. Today we're going to review the protocol for the blood-borne pathogens to our staff and faculty. Every year we do this in order that you are aware of the situations that might arise in the school setting. Although exposure to these blood-borne pathogens are very low in the school situation or setting, that we should just prepare you to deal with the situation if it arises. The common blood-borne pathogens are hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. Other body fluids such as sputum, urine, vomit, nasal secretions um, are to be dealt with only if you see visible blood. Okay. Instances in the school setting you most commonly are bloody noses in the classroom, cuts and abrasions um, in PE class or in the hallways or even on the athletic field. Uncommonly are um, needle sticks and no, okay. So needle sticks and needle sticks and human bites. Also, um, commonly would be the sharp objects in which um, a student can get cut, or um, glass dropping in the cafeteria and cutting a student. Um, reviewing the most common rule is to treat all human blood or body fluids containing blood as infected blood. The best barrier for you as a staff member or faculty member is to wear gloves. Put on the gloves, both hands, not just one. And in your packet that you all should have in your classroom should contain several pairs of gloves some paper towels, and I am going to also start putting um, the red paper, our plastic bags to dispose of the paper towels. After the situation that might arise in the classroom, please bring the red plastic bag with the soil contents to the office so we can dispose them in the red container. Um, again, the best protection for you is to put on your gloves Cover the area, whether it be the nose, the cut, the abrasion, with the paper towel and send them, the student, to the office. Again, common sense, if the student has cut themselves severely, please walk them down or escort them to the office. Over the years, I've noticed that not only girls, but boys, once they see the blood, might get a little oozy. So for their protection, please just... Um, have someone escort them or call the office, we'll come and get them. After the situation has subsided, take off the gloves, and in the end we'll show you how to take off the gloves properly. But um, wash your hands with soap and water, hot soapy water, for at least 20 seconds, just to prevent any blood that might have gotten underneath the gloves. In the classroom, if there are, is any blood or any body secretions that have dropped to the floor, that we con you contact the office so we can call maintenance to come and properly pick that up. Um, new studies have revealed that hepatitis B in a blood dropping dried on the floor can be active for seven days. So if you see any blood, just make sure that um, maintenance is called to proper, properly um, wipe that up. Right. Okay, now we will, and if anyone cannot find this in their um, classroom, please let me know. I'll be happy to give you, get you another kit. So, for instance, if the student suddenly has a bloody nose, put on the gloves, hopefully... They fit all, and make sure they kind of fit over the wrist, if possible. Don't just wear one, wear both of them. So at the end, if the student has a bloody nose, give them 
the paper towel to hold over their nose or a cut and then send them to the office. When you're all done, the main thing to remember is that you do not touch with your bare hands the outside of the gloves. So what I do is gently work the gloves off of your fingers, both sides. Take whatever hand you're most dominant when you want to, pinch the middle, turn it inside out, put two fingers under, or one finger, depending how much room you have. Two fingers, I do, under the glove, turn it inside out, hold it like this, and then drop it into the plastic bag. Again, the important thing is that you do not touch your hands the contaminated glove.